G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be doing the game which is between Geelong and Carlton at the MCG Saturday night, Saturday twilight even. And it was Geelong getting the job done by 13 points in front of a record home crowd for the Cats. 87, almost 88,000 fans uh, showed up for yesterday's game which was absolutely incredible and definitely felt every bit of it being uh, at the ground watching the display right in front of us. Well, what a win. That was, uh, yeah, very good. Takes the Cats to 7-0. and oh. um, Yeah, I'm oh, just very impressed with uh, how the guys are going. And, yeah, our performance yet again, just being ultra-efficient with our ball use and making sure that, yeah, we make the opposition pay full price for you know, mistakes they made and obviously off the back of some Carlton mistakes and mistakes forced from our pressure. Yet again, very stoked with our pressure and, and how we're transpiring on that front and you know keeping teams hemmed in and trying to force turnover and, and then score off the back of that, which we've been successful in the first seven weeks so far this season. What a start to the game it was. Carlton, obviously, they had their chances and uh, you know they had the yips in front of goal a little bit and it was a... Yeah, slightly contagious, but, you know, it did uh, pick up a little bit and it ended up 50-50 for them. But, um, yeah, clearly they may not have taken yeah, the most of their opportunities they did have. And, yeah, the Cats got uh, bang for their buck on the scoreboard. Converting on goals, massive. And, I mean, not the only reason we won, clearly. But, yeah, uh, we are able to, yeah, get the scoreboard moving in the right direction. Almost five goals every quarter, minus the third where the Blues definitely got on top there. But whilst they were on top in that period, we yeah we didn't concede like eight or nine goals or anything crazy like that. Um, yeah, yeah, what a game it was. Yeah, you know, it was tough in the contest. We we knew, yeah, we just knew going in the Blues would be pretty strong in there, and you know they definitely showed it. We we struggled at times uh, in terms of you know that clearance and stoppage game, which yeah, Carlton uh, are clearly much more adapt to being able to you know be quite proficient in that area, especially with the guns they've got at their disposal with Cripps and and Walsh, and I'm sure there's, there's plenty of other players I'm missing, but they're definitely ones that hurt you probably the most. Uh, but again, yeah, it was just the power of many. Um, finding a way for the Cats and, yeah, just the effort of the whole 22 that played to, you know, find a result for us. But, yeah, I thought our pressure was magnificent. Uh, a million votes for our back line that just were under siege for, you know, a fair chunk of the night. Um, they, they were extraordinary, I thought, the way they were able to hold up and yeah, they've definitely got weapons up there, that's for sure, and a, and a relatively potent forward line. And I felt, yeah, our... Max did a great job there, um, even with some of the other supply they did get. And they did get some pretty decent looks at times when Carlton sort of running out of the front of stoppage. But even throughout the game, I felt like we had control in the stoppages in terms of not making sure they're going too out the front. We can sort of see in that third term um, where Carlton had probably most of their yeah, dominance on the, the scoreboard with scores from stoppage or store, scores from uh, clearances even. And out of the centre stoppage, but yeah, I, I felt yeah with the supply they did have, they did a great job. Uh, I thought their transition was was you know superb, especially from the back line. Uh, and people will say, oh Carlton, they won all the key stats, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll go through the tackle counts. But I feel like they definitely had lots of numbers inside their forward fifty to keep it in there. But then once we got it out, we had an open forward line, so they're like oh Geelong only won because they were efficient. Well. We set up the game a certain way. Carlton set up the game a certain way. We knew what we wanted to do. And, you know, it's not our fault <laughs> getting uh, good looks in front of goal with how we wanted to have the game look versus how Carlton decided to defend. And, yeah, they, they pressed everyone up uh, into their forward 50. They got a lot of tackles inside 50. That's great. Um, but then we had an open four line more often than not. And that was uh, a big part of the efficiency piece. And, yeah, not really an anomaly either. Geelong, I think they haven't really been statistically profound all season, really. But um, the main thing is just being able to have a system that's 
sustainable and and it has been. It's won seven games of footy. Um, it's beaten some good teams in there, some teams that are around the mark of the eight, some teams that could be top four. So, you know, we, we, I don't know if we still haven't played anyone good. Might have to check Nathan Buckley on the couch on, on Monday, see what he reckons. But, yeah, um, normally finds an excuse for oppositions uh, that we defeat. But, anyway, can't can't win them all, Bucks. Uh, yeah, what... Yeah, just a really good performance. Uh, absolutely shitting my Dax when it got to eight points. So I was thinking, <laughs> when it was 32 points, I didn't know exactly how long there was to go, but I knew it was you know somewhat, probably about 10 minutes of game time to go. It was about 21 on the clock. I thought, all right, I'd like one more here just to be super sure uh, because when Carlton do get on a bit of a run, that they can with their clearance and stoppage dominance. And they did, and they did. We we just sort of, uh, yeah, made a couple of mistakes ourselves. We weren't quite sort of, yeah, composed, um, you know, when they sort of started that fire back, and then it got pretty real, and Akers decides to turn into Chris Judd out of nowhere. And, yeah, yeah, they got it very close. I, I was thinking, gee, here's a good test for us. Um, well, and then we were able to stem the flow the last three minutes. And Cameron kicking the winning goal or the ceiling goal, I should say, with, you know, was very promising to see. And a bit of a sigh of relief because I'm thinking, all right, I have to kick three goals in like two minutes. Not impossible, but very improbable. And thankfully, we were able to sort of, yeah, hang on. Um, so, yeah, it was absolute. What, what a classic game to watch, you know, if you're a neutral fan. Um, neutral fans, Cats fans will love it. Carlton fans, obviously, not, not so much um, when you're on the wrong side of the result. But, yeah, just a, an absolute cracking game. Two sides that are going to be up there. What it did validate is these, both of these sides are real. <laughs> There's been some question marks about who Carlton have defeated. Uh, more questions on who Geelong have defeated, uh, thanks to some uh, commentators and expert analysts out there. Some of them. Um, but, yeah, we're doing okay at the moment. And, yeah, we're we're playing some good footy at the moment. Uh, premierships aren't won now, though. So, yeah, L- liking what we're doing. We're banking the wins, getting it done. Um, we're still, yeah, it's a long, long season. And we've seen teams in the past, you know, Melbourne, North Melbourne 9-0, uh, Melbourne 10-0, and, you know, didn't mean they won, won the premiership. So, yeah, doing as much as we can right at the moment. Um, which will help set us up, you know, in future weeks to plan the season out. So, yeah, that's a bit of a, a summary of the game. Just a crazy game, high energy, high octane, high scoring, um, riddled with mistakes, and, yeah, Geelong counter-punching on, on those mistakes, finding a way to get uh, yeah, get the four points. Really pleased we got out to 32 and got a bit of a buffer for, yeah, our hard work and... Yeah. yeah, got a bit nervous late, that's for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, Carlton, uh, uh, a bloody good side indeed. All right, let's go through some of the numbers now on the team side of things. So it's going to be mostly Carlton here, but uh, yeah, Carlton got more of the footy. Uh, inside 50s, you know, minus 21 for, for us. So in terms of, like, you can look at that a few different ways. If, if you look at this game in isolation, you go, oh, the Cats are lucky to win this. I don't look at it in isolation. I review every week and go, well, we've been down in most of the stats most weeks, but, I mean, the most important stats, this one, um, the scoreboard. So whilst we're giving away certain luxuries, whether that's at field position, whether that's at stoppage, we seem to find the most efficient way forward. The forward line movement is really good. The high half forwards are working up and back really hard. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes there to create space for forwards to ensure that you know we don't have thir- you know 30 players in, inside our forward 50 when we do get it. So you can have you can have 100 inside 50s, but if there's 36 players in that that uh, inside 50 spot, well, well, good luck to you, good luck scoring. If you have six players or eight players, four and four, for example. And it's going to be a lot easier to get a score on the board, isn't it? So our, our looks inside 50 were much more dangerous and, and that will be exemplified with the efficiency inside 50. So with we were scoring two out of every three, Carlton just uh, underneath one out of every two scoring. Small margins, small margins indeed. And we're doing well, no small margins. <laughs> Hitouts, uh, they got plus 10. Surprising wasn't more. 
And then we've got clearances were Carlton's way plus six and out of the centre we were dominated in the centre clearances early. I think it was six zip at one stage, but we're able to sort of hang in there and fight back. Carlton plus three in that area. We're usually pretty solid in the centre clearance game and score from it very nicely. Into Paddy Dangerfield doing some great work there. Stoppage around the ground. Carlton got the nod there. Uh, more contested ball, more uncontested ball on the outside. It's it's funny usually going through some of these numbers and going, yep, all right. So there's particular patterns to this, but there's there's uh, some some crazy madness behind the scenes that the Cats don't have to uh, win these counts, or win these numbers. More so, the focus is around uh, this number here. Just when they do get inside 50, they're really dangerous. And it hasn't just been a one-week thing where you go, oh, okay, they were efficient that one week, but is that going to be sustainable over the, the long term? And I'd be interested to check the numbers over sort of the last seven weeks to see what the efficiency inside 50 is. But I suggest it'd be pretty high because we haven't had massive numbers inside 50 because we're not getting field position as often uh, due to, yeah, the midfield's... It's it's regenerating. No, that that's a long story of it. A long and short of the midfield. So yeah, marks a Carlton plus thirteen in that region. But yeah, marks inside fifty. Here we go. The big number. We're able to yeah hit hit players up on the lead very nicely, and also find players in in you know, really good spots in in uncontested situations. Contested marks twelve to eight. So got the nod there as well. And time in front is a really good stat as well. So, yeah, deservably won the game. Um, if that stat doesn't say anything right there, Carlton up for it's about two and a half minutes. And that means we've been in front 27 to 28 quarters. And I think the only quarter we've been behind in at a break is Brisbane last week, round six, quarter one, quarter time. We were down. Tackle's really good. So, our tackle them just... Uh, makes sense they had more of the ball. So, yeah, this is what I wanted to touch on. So, Carlton, great forward line pressure. You read that as great forward line pressure. Um, they had 30 shots on goal and eight inside of our forward 50. But, yeah, it's the chicken and the egg. Did we need to not tackle so much because we had an open forward line? Uh, did we stack our back line to make it difficult for Carlton to score? Yes. Did Carlton also bring up numbers? Yes. So, they they went to town on this there, applied a lot of pressure. Kept it in their front half as much as possible. Uh, but even with that, those numbers, it wasn't quite enough to get the chocolates. Could it have been different if they kicked straighter? Maybe it doesn't, just because you kick straight doesn't mean that the game doesn't change in other ways. You're not gonna, just going to kick five straight. <laughs> and then, you know, it, things change. If, if a team kicks a couple in a row or three in a row, then coaches change. So it's no guarantee just because you kick straight, you you just win. A lot has to go, yeah, a lot has to go right. It helps, it helps, I will say. One percenters, lo loving this. I reckon we're up every game <laughs> this year in one percenters. That's been a really good stat to watch. All right, let's look at the overall, I suppose, team stats and we'll go through some of the individuals and go through some of the votes as well. So, oh, it's always tough doing the votes, I must say, and, and I'm... When we win and the votes are difficult, I love that because it means so many guys have had a red hot crack and everyone's played their role to a tee. But it's hard to go past this man, the the ice man, Jeremy Cameron Darty has kicked five, had the seventeen touches, nine marks, got even even got a tackle in there, a couple of clearances as well, also set up a goal. So yeah, six goals directly from Jez's uh, boot. I'm sure there's more scoring involvements that uh, aren't listed here in the the basic statistics. But what a man. He's got to be one of the all-time great uh, recruits and, and pickups for the Cats. Um, maybe not as great as Gary, but senior, but <laughs> he, he's, uh, he's just been awesome. Worth every penny, been amazing. He just, yeah, knows how to kick the big goals in the big moments. Very accurate uh, on the night. He kicked six against them last year. So, yeah, seems to like the Blues a little bit. Uh, and then, yeah, he just roams up and down the ground. Prize a really good option. I thought, yeah, Eric... Aerial presence was uh, yeah significant. He took taking nine marks. Two votes. Uh, we'll go Grian Myers for the two votes. So he kicked a couple, had the twenty-two, four marks, six tackles, five clearances. Also got a goal assist, almost five hundred meters gained as well. He's just so clean with his ball use. He just takes 
absolute care of every kick that he, he does and has a style on pizzazz that is just almost unmatched. Also hit the scoreboard in a big way. I think he kicked seven goals last year and he's kicked seven already this year. So uh, thanks, Langs, for, for that start. I uh, appreciate that one. So, yeah, he got... And the 22 as well. So he's just one of those guys that works super hard. We, we love his work. And, yeah, he's just been an absolute massive player for us in the last... Probably the last three years, really, but especially, you know, this last uh, 18 months, he's been extraordinary. One vote's really hard. I could have given it to probably 10 players, but I'm going to go Maxi Holmes. He, he deserves a vote here. He kicked a goal, a uh, big goal indeed. That was, yeah, right on 50, important time at the game. He had the 26 touches, five marks as well, a couple of tackles, a couple of clearances, 500 metres gained. Yeah, his speed, his enthusiasm, uh, signed on for another four years. So, yeah, it was a great sign and vote of confidence in, in the Cats. And, yeah, we're really pleased to see him around for, you know, the medium to long term. Uh, yeah, what a player he is, and he's using the ball yeah very well. Also, um, so that that's been an improvement I've, I've seen in him, and especially you saw at the game. Uh, love Maxi, love the way he goes about it. So yeah, he gets the one vote for mine. Massive welcome back to Cam Guthrie. He's well, he's been out for over a year, uh, which is quite unbelievable. But he's obviously had a, a cracking preseason. Back into it, I thought it might have been a little bit early, but uh, the coach is no best. He had the 27 touches, seven marks, including an absolute hanger on the on the wing, half forward area. He kicked a couple of tackles, kicked a few tackles. <laughs> uh, had a clearance goal assist as well, which was uh, nice and early to Jeremy Cameron. So, yeah, didn't look like he had missed a beat. Um, so, yeah, he, he was really good for us. Played sort of half back to help out the other Guthrie, doing a little bit of Tom Stewart stuff down back. So uh, that was uh, very good from Cam Guthrie. His brother, Zach, what a game he played. He was superb yet again, just uh, being Tom Stewart, essentially, uh, yet again. So he had the 19, eight marks, four tackles, nearly 500 metres going as well. So, yeah, he, his game was unbelievable. And, yeah, you know, stiff not to get a vote, really. But he's uh, coming on in leaps and bounds. What a player he's become for us. So strong and confident and just uh, makes the right decisions. Tanner Bruin had the 19, had seven tackles, six clearances, from, yeah, just uh, around the 65% game time there. So, yeah, they're just um, making sure that he's not you know, playing too much game time. They're giving him a little rest and burst so that he's nice and fresh for when he needs to be and obviously managing, you know, a younger body, uh, making sure that he's all good for, you know, the whole of the season. So, yeah, he, he was uh, did some really good grunt work on the inside and uh, he plays a great role for us. Zach Tui. Had, had, had a bit of a rest. He's back and kicked three. So uh, it was good to hear the uh, yeah, the theme song going on afterwards. A uh, bit of uh, Irish music for us all at the, after those three goals. Uh, we just want him to kick him because you just you just can't be sad listening to the, uh, the tunes after two he kicks, kicks a goal. But he had the 17. He had three tackles, a couple of clearances, and just under 500 metres gain there from his 80% game time. So, yeah, again, oh, it's great when uh, you play your old side and then you play a ripping game. So, yeah, I thought Tui definitely needed you know, a little bit of rest to make sure he was nice and uh, you know, keen to get stuck into it. Played, yeah, a great game for us. And, um, yeah, love, love it. Absolutely clutch on, on kicking goals. So, great work from Reg. Love your work, mate. <laughs> Over to Mitch Duncan. He had the 24, six marks. And also a goal assist. So, yeah, he just uh, he just cracks in really hard every week, uh, finds the footy. He's always a good uh, release option as well. So, yeah, he's normally um, five to ten marks uh, every week. So, yeah, he's just uh, he just gets it done every week. No fuss. Jackie Bowes had the 14 touches, kicked a goal, a very nice goal, almost the ceiling goal. I mean, who knows? <laughs> who really knows? He had a couple of tackles, 10 a couple of marks and 10 tackles, tentacles. A few clearances as well from his 66% game time. So, again, yeah, they're just these, these younger guys just getting a nice game time and keeping that midfield sort of fresh and flowing. And, and you know, whilst we, you know, the midfield uh, had, had a tough night at the office, to be able to rotate players throughout and at least make it more difficult for the Carlton midfield um, was, was pleasing to see. 
Tyson Stengel, he kicked one, had 17, had three marks, a couple of tackles, a few clearances as well, two goal assists. Uh, this man is just the definition of clean. He's playing, yes, yeah, some great football for us. Um, yeah, super dangerous up forward. And, yeah, just, just, keeps, uh, just keeps at it, keeps you guessing. Great contested mark in the goal square uh, on Williams. So, yeah, that was really nice to see him back into some really good form over the last uh, month or so. Paddy Boy, he had a goal next to his name, a very nice one in that first term, 16 touches, had the three marks, two tackles, three clearances, two goal assists as well, almost 500 metres gained. Um, and he only played a half a game. So he unfortunately went down with the hamstring by all reports. So most hamstrings, probably about three weeks, and you suspect they would be a little bit more conservative. So, I mean, I want Paddy, if we are to be a team to make finals, we want to ensure, you know, Paddy's... Uh, yeah, I reckon they'd probably give him close to four to six weeks and hopefully their temper, how he attacks the ball a little bit um, due to, yeah, he probably <laughs> can't afford to yeah have another one of those. Otherwise, that would be a hugely, uh, yeah, <laughs> a, a huge blow for us. But what he did do when he was on the ground, uh, he was amazing. Uh, if he played the full game, definitely would have got a couple of votes in there, I reckon. But, yeah. Um, some time out for Paddy uh, with Stewie to probably come back in for Paddy. So, yeah, uh, hopefully a smooth recovery. Ollie Henry kicked three, had the eight touches, five marks. Got a clearance for his good work there as well. So, yeah, he's just doesn't, again, very just like the Cats forward line, very efficient. Didn't get a lot of the footy, didn't really matter. Uh, he just makes you pay full price on the scoreboard. He's very accurate. I'm going to have to see how many points he's kicked this year versus how many goals, but yeah, he normally kicks pretty straight with the chances he gets. So, yeah, he's become a dead-eye dick in front of goal. Uh, he's been great for us. What a, what a pick-up he's been. Blitz had one goal, one. Had the 11 touches. Also got involved. few marks, tackles, clearances. But, yeah, what we love Blitz for is just all the, the hard running he does, the one percenters that he does, the... Yeah, the, all those little bits and pieces where, you know, little knocks in there that help stifle the opposition. So, yeah, he, he, he's an absolute warrior for us. Oh, Reese, 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 Reese. Had the eight touches, three tackles, uh, took a mark in there, three clearances. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, not a good game. Uh, pretty poor game. I, I think Pitnett. He made Pitnett look like uh, Polly Farmer out there. So, uh, you know, he was falling to the ground a fair bit. So, I don't know if the, the shoes, uh, the footy boots need a bit of work. But, yeah, no, hopefully we can get a bit better from Reese, But probably needs uh, another little rest there. And I'm sure there's another player I've got in mind that could do with a bit of a rest. But, yeah, unfortunately got, uh, yeah, got destroyed. Uh, there's, there's no sort of uh, sugarcoating that. But, yeah, obviously... Yeah, not, not his best game, unfortunately. Jackie Henry kicked no goals, but he did have nine kicks and 12 disposals. Had the six marks. I thought, yeah, he was pivotal down back for us. I think Mackay got a fair few marks up the ground and was really good up the ground, but uh, wasn't able to yeah, be a massive uh, impact inside 50. Missed a couple, might have kicked one or two. Ollie Dempsey works hard for us. He had the 13 touches, four marks, a couple of clearances as well. Got a goal assist for his work there. Yeah, he, yeah, he just run, runs and guns up and down that wing um, in high half forward role, which is a tough role to play. But, yeah, let's let's keep him going. And, yeah, he, he does some um, some great work for us. Cole Jasney, he had the 10 touches, four marks, Got a tackle in there as well. Yeah, had some had had a tough night at the office, I must say, but he was uh, felt really solid down back. Kono ended up with three, uh, one little push in the back uh, in the goal square, and then Kono um, got the cherry pickings out the back. Uh, but yeah, I thought he had a lot of one-on-one -on -one contests with Kono and held up really, really well, especially when there was a lot of uh, supply going that way. I thought, yeah, he held his own, had some moments. Turned over a little bit, but again, yeah, couldn't have asked for much more. Tommy Hawkins had the eight touches, four tackles, got involved in the hitouts, as we know he likes to inside 50 and a clearance. I'm happy for Hawk to get a bit of a rest. Uh, whether he was playing a decoy forward, I don't know. Uh, I wasn't forensically an analysing it uh, that closely, but... Wittering takes him to the cleaners every time he plays him, so um, 
yeah, Hawk needs to get on the move a bit more, needs to get out of the wrestle a little bit less, especially with guys that can handle that, like Weedering and Jones can definitely handle that. Uh, for those types of players, you just want to get on the lead, uh, get on the move. But potentially, you know, Hawk not uh, being a pivotal point there allows Cameron to kick five. It allows Henry to kick three, Tui to kick three. So, yeah, we didn't have to have Hawk have a big night. But, um, look, get Shannon Neely, I think, and just give Hawk another rest or two to, yeah, make sure he's in, in full health. And, and you know, if, again, if we are to make finals... We want Hawk to be at his absolute best at the pointy end of the season um, and not yeah, use up all, all the tickets now because there's not too many petrol tickets left in, in, in Hawk, to be fair. He has had some good games, but that's his third game in a row where he hasn't kicked a goal. So, yeah, and that might not have happened, well, especially in the last um, 12 or so years, 12, 13 years while he's been in his absolute prime of his career. And, yeah, just the the high stands we set of Hawk and he's been a great, um, great player for us over a long period of time. Uh, another rest or two would uh, do him no harm. Tommy Atkins came on as a sub. He had the six touches, had seven tackles, more tackles and touches. What a man this guy is. Uh, he played uh, yeah, 30% game time there, came on as a sub for Paddy Boy. Paddy came off and, yeah, won that crucial clearance we had to win. He was running backwards, I don't know why, but <laughs> just making sure everything's all good there. Uh, and he found a target anyway. So, yeah, uh, Atkins with the limited game time, uh, he'll probably, again, with Paddy out, likely get more opportunity in the midfield. Puffett had 17, a few handballs in there. Uh, got a mark and a tackle and a clearance in there. So, yeah, probably inside the contest, uh, not as profound as what he has been and normally gets a few more tackles, but we saw Bose get 10 tackles, which was great. So, yeah, struggled a little bit. Um, played Played okay, played solidly, but, yeah, hopefully we can... Get back to yeah the first week, six weeks at Brandon Parfit, um, more so than, than how he performed this week. So he was okay. Um, will be better for the run for sure. Mark O'Connor had the six touches. He didn't get a lot of it, but I felt like when he did get it, <laughs> nine metres game, that's 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 great. Uh, had the two marks as well as four tackles. Can absolutely glove a mark. His overhead marking is really good. Didn't get a lot of it. I, he might have been playing, uh, paying close attention to, say, a Crips or a Walsh. I, I didn't pay that close attention, but uh, O'Connor definitely would have been, yeah, helping inside that midfield for sure at times. Bradley, close, got 11, had a mark in there, a couple of tackles, two goal assists. He's just, uh, yeah, one of the most selfless players. He, he brings his teammates into it. He works so hard, both ends of the ground. Uh, yeah, he's been brilliant for us, and whilst uh, you know he's a bit lower on the stat sheet here, he sets up two, and we win by two goals. So love love his work. Sam DeConing, uh not normally in the bottom three, but he's not a massive disposal uh, man. But he had five touches for the game. Didn't even take a mark, which was interesting. Uh, got a tackle and a clearance. So yeah, I just um, again still a little bit off. Maybe 2022 was a was an aberration. Oh, not an aberration, but was the exception. But yeah, hopefully we can see some better form from De Koning. I'm sure he did some really good spoils and and defensive efforts. And I mean, I don't feel like any key forward absolutely tore him apart. Um, Kodo obviously had some pretty good moments, and I still don't think a player's kicked more than three against us. So we'll keep we'll keep that uh, on watch. I don't feel like a player's got a hold of us just yet. I play well. I play well. Don't you worry. So that's a bit of a review of the game there. We'll go into who we've got next week. So we've got Melbourne at the MCG. This one will be Saturday night, 7.30. Going to be a big game, no doubt about that. Uh, I think recent form has been pretty solid uh, outside of the... I think they got us three times in 2021, and, and then we've been able to get them the last couple of times. But we've only played them sort of, yeah, once a year. The team we don't play super often. Interestingly enough, and the last time I played him at the MCG was 2021. That one was an absolute snooze fest, and we lost by four goals, but we were never really in the game, so it was a weird one. Based on our current form, I, I like our chances. I mean, I find our forward line is better than Melbourne's, and I feel like we've got the ability to, yeah, find a way around May and Lever, and, and I'm sure these fans and anyone that's not a Cats fan will go, oh, they, they've won because they played at, at GMHBA. That might help a little, a little bit. Um, also, know Geelong played two games at GMHBA in 2020, and they still made the grand final. So, 
um, for everyone that at home there that talks about Cats home ground advantage, uh, they've just been a good side for a long time and yeah, enjoy. I think we'll win, not but we are gonna we're gonna drop one at some stage, so it's just gonna be a matter of picking which one that is, and you know Melbourne will be. Yeah, raring to go, and they haven't been in amazing form. So, I mean, if you're just purely stacking up on form versus form, I like our form better than Melbourne's. Um, their forward lines make shift at best all the time, uh, whereas I feel like we've got more solidification with our sort of mix, and players know exactly what they're doing. They know their role. So, But what I do know is contest, contest and defense are big for the Ds. I know they'll get that in a good spot, um, but even when teams have had crazy numbers they still haven't been able to find a way to win so yeah we've um we've basically yeah said uh screw you to the the stats and just focused on the the final score just getting the win so what a game it was hope you all enjoyed it at home or at the ground uh it was absolutely beaming at the ground loved it Superb performance, uh, found a way to win yet again and take us to 7-0, and so a game clear on top. Uh, not by percentages, the Giants had a massive win over the Lions, and this one, uh, we the Blues scored a fair bit and it was a close game. So, But there you go. Got the Ds next week, and uh, hopefully, yeah, just keep the keep the win sticking over. That'd be, that'd be great. I'm yeah, very excited by what we can do and optimistic with our, yeah, our prospects moving forward. So we'll see how it all pans out, but... Guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. Don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe away so you can keep up to date with all Cats reviews each and every week. Thanks for tuning in again, guys. I'll catch you on the next video.